Now, <clears throat> this one is, it, as you can see, it's black and white. It's, uh, it's 1957. <clears throat> Pardon me. It's called The Monolith Monsters. Um, 1957. It's a fairly interesting film, actually. <clears throat> the story is that a meteorite crashes to the ground in a desert in America and it explodes into many small fragments of black rock scattered widely and a geologist takes one of these fragments back to his office for examination and the publisher of a local newspaper and a friend of the geologist is also present and they both discuss the interesting chemical and geological findings of that sample and it gets really technical, it gets really scientific and technical and <clears throat> later, in, later in that night, a, a wind blows a jar of water onto the rock uh, and the rock starts to grow by expansion. And the next day, the head geologist comes back into the office and looks in the lab and he finds their office, the lab, destroyed and rock fragments everywhere. And that first geologist he finds dead, standing up, petrified, solid. Uh, so that's a bit weird. And the head geologist's girlfriend happens to be a teacher and she's taking her students on a field trip. And one small girl, <coughs> me, <coughs> one small girl picks up a black rock fragment and takes it home with her. And she can't take it in the house. She's, um, her mother stops her from doing that. So she tries washing it and then just dumps it into the water bucket and goes in and has dinner. Now, the autopsy on the first geologist pr proves inexplicable. They just don't know, you know, so they, so they sent it to a specialist, sent the body. Uh, the farm where the little girl lives is destroyed and her parents are found dead. And the girl is alive, but in severe state of shock, totally catatonic, she can't speak. And she's, she's rushed to a medical institute where it is discovered that she is t slowly turning to stone. And an old college professor then becomes inv involved in the story. He realises the rocks came from a meteorite. And they examine the farm, finding that the ground has been discoloured around where the rock fragments have fallen. And similarly, all the bits of broken furniture in the wood of the wrecked house, anywhere that there's rock fragments, it's just discoloured. And the rocks seem to be, they conclude, that the rocks are draining something from whatever it touches, including people. And it turns out to be silicon. And as I say, it gets incredibly scientific and probably quite valid as well. So they decide that they're going to inject silicon into the little girl who is by now on an iron lung. And this seems to work, <laughs> funnily enough. And the fragments are traced to the crash meteor. Investigations as to why all this is happening show up nothing. And then it starts to rain outside the lab and there's this big... Um, tension scene where they just don't know what is causing the rocks to expand like this uh, but they they're about to spill some coffee onto the rock and they miss the fact that the coffee spilt onto the rock has caused the rock to expand but they put some water on it and then they, they realize ah it's the water it's making the rocks expand and it's raining out so they realize oh wait a minute all those rocks outside they're all going to expand and they do and they the, the rocks as i say the rocks start uh, forming huge monoliths which then topple over this is the monolith monster aspect of it they topple over and smash into lots of other pieces which in turn um, grow up into small in, into large monoliths again and they fall over because of their weight and smash into fragments scattering everywhere and so on so they realize that these monoliths will advance their way and threaten life down in the valley so they an evacuation is arranged it's very, very. It's a very weird film, um, and it's a black and white film. As I say, the dialogue is exceedingly scientific and technically detailed throughout. Um, very, very odd. Very odd indeed. Uh, I kind of, I kind of recommend it. <laughs>